Hayden, how are you over in Spain? It looks very nice there on your balcony. Yeah, well, we've had like a week of a lot of rain, but yeah, I'm doing well, doing well myself. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, thanks. Um, but listen, thanks for taking the time out to have a chat with me. It's, it's very rare you hear of an Irish player playing in Spain and stuff like that, and I'm sure we'll come to it. But congratulations, obviously, on your your contract, and uh, it's great to see you doing so thank well. You. Thank you, thank you. It's my pleasure to be on here. Yeah, so basically, just for people who may not know anything about you, I'm basically going to get a bit of a background profile on you. Um, I suppose we'll start off how you qualify for Ireland and when you started playing for Ireland, and then we'll move on to, obviously, your pathway and, de and your development so far. So, where you know, where were you born? What are the Irish links and what qualifies you playing for Ireland? Well, me personally, I was born in England. I was born in Kingston, but my mass, I like, my whole mass, I grandmother, granddad, all that, all from Finglas in Dublin. You are, you can hear it in your accent there. Yeah, yeah, because I always go to Ireland for a month till stay there, so I get the accent with me. Yeah, you you obviously play. You've been playing for the Ireland underage team as well. There, I think you scored against England. Am I right in saying that? Yes, yes, I did. So I captained the team and scored against England. Great feeling, to be honest. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, so I'm sure fans listen to that would be music to their ears. But uh, <laughs> just just in regards, obviously that team because it, it's uh, Jason O'Donoghue who's your, was your coach, I suppose. Or uh, you've moved up the ages now. Probably he's not your coach anymore. Yeah. But very no. exciting team coming through there at the moment. Definitely, we, we have a lot of talent on that team. That's the first thing I saw and told my ma that the talent that we had on the team, not now anymore, but when we played, it was just, and we, the way we linked up the first time we met, it was all like a family. So I think that that made us play that well on the pitch as well. Yeah, I think, I think that's the thing, you know, in actual Irish camps from the senior level, I, say, I suppose, as they work their way down, there seems to be a very much family uh, ori orientated kind of feeling towards all the teams. Is that something that the FAI is going to work on? Which is that, you know, when you get in, that you have to get to know each other quick. And I was, I was at the Australia game and Jason brought me in behind the scenes and they were showing kind of, they do a lot of stuff behind the scenes to kind of bring the group together, where it's learning the national anthem, all these types of things. Yes, I remember in our first tournament, the first time we met, it was in the camp, but like the first actual tournament was in Mayo. The first thing Jason did to us was bring us all into a room and we all had to say what our name were, everything. That's like the most important thing, I think. Yeah, just for yourself, because I, and I know Jason was doing that as well. He was bringing in players, I think, from America as well. I think a lot yeah. of play from America in that Australia game. Um, but he seems to be bringing in players from all over to kind of give them the Irish feel, and as I said, with the national anthem and give them that kind of sense of identity within Irish football as well. So just with your own case coming, because you'd be flying in from Spain, I imagine, when you're yeah. coming into camp and stuff like that. So what's that like when you're coming from Spain? Because again, I, I kind of go, it's a, it's a bit out of the norm right now. But then again, if you're kind of looking at the way Brexit's gone and stuff like that, you probably start seeing it more often now. But you're kind of a unique case at the moment. Yeah, it's 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 good I guess uh, whenever I play football and I have a league match or something and then I have, but I have to go to Ireland for example last year it's like it's actually a good feeling because like I go back to my home country I go back to where all my family is so yeah it's actually really good and just because you've mentioned that you only kind of get to come over maybe it's in the summer or whatever you probably get a couple of months off school or whatever in the summer holidays and stuff like that when you come across obviously before COVID, were your family able to come and watch you, say, out in Abbottstown or wherever you'd be playing, or oh, in Mayo, yes, as you mentioned? Yes, yes. Hey, I think every single tournament that I played in Ireland, in Pinatar, when we went there, in Mayo, and all those in England, my mom, and my stepdad was in all of them. They went to all the places, and I, I, was gonna, I was supposed to play against Australia. At the end, Malaga did not let me because we had a really important league match, but all my cousins, granddad, all of them were wanting to come down to see me because, especially, where did they play against Australia again? Charles, in, Charles? in Abbottstown. Yeah, Abbottstown, yeah, the that's like, building, yeah, yeah, that's like, I have a house there. Well, my granddad's house is like five minutes from there. So it's really close and all my family live in that area. So they all wanted to come and see me, but it was a shame that I couldn't go. Yeah, because obviously it was a team that were two years above you and obviously yeah. the lads that did play 
I mean, they, they bet him, but that was, as a, we already mentioned, it, the, the talent coming through there, some of the other players, Sam and Kevin and, Kevin, and Cahill as well, has gone abroad there to train with yeah, the they Italian club. So you have a, a really good bunch coming through there. Obviously, we're hoping that all of will progress in the future. But just tell me from your own pathway, because, you know, you mentioned Malaga there. We've spoken about Villarreal. So talk me through your kind of journey from your, well, I, I'm going to say early age because you're still quite young. I, I imagine you're yeah. only 16 or 17 still. 16, 16. 16. So you still have a, a long way to go either way. But just from, from your kind of early days, again, Malaga, huge club in Spain and Villarreal. So I'll let you talk me through it. Uh, I was born in England, so I was I only stayed in England for three months. So literally, when I was three months old, I moved to Spain. I moved to Tarifa. Don't probably won't know where it is, but it's it's down down at the south of Spain. It's in Cadiz. So yeah, I moved to Tarifa. There, I stayed there for like four years, maybe nah, three years. Then I moved down to Estepona. That's where I act. I live right now. Well, I live here, but my parents live there in Estepona, and I played for me home club, Estepolense. Uh, it's called. I played there for like four years and five no five years i think but in those five years like my last two years malaga i played all the tournaments with them i went training with them mondays and wednesdays i played i played a tournament i went to germany with them came top goal scorer there. not signed or anything still at my hometown club just doing trials and stuff so so i was going to sign with them i think when i was like eight i think or nine but i had i burst my appendix so that so they said they'll just wait a few more years. So I think like two years later, my last year of seven aside football, I signed with Malaga. First year, I'm not even going to lie to you, did not play at all. I was, I don't know, maybe my confidence wasn't the best or anything, but I just did not play. First year of 11 aside, I played a bit, not that much. I did play maybe half the season, sorry, line up, but then he just didn't believe in me. I don't know what, what happened, but, but then my next year, of 11 aside that was my best year i i came top goal scorer of the league i scored like 27 goals and i don't know how many matches we won the league and after that is when i say everything exploded uh, after that i got interest from different teams and we talked to them and all but at the end malaga believed in me so they gave me a nice contract that i signed three years so i was my plan was to stay in malaga try to come first team but then my last year it was uh, how do I explain this uh, Malaga is Malaga but they have a different team so they can compete in the same league so I was with a different team it was still Malaga but it's called a different name and we was competing against a year older like Betis a year older Sevilla all those top clubs in Spain just a year older to get experience and then Covid happened uh, I, when it was in quarantine for like three months nothing came up but when when we left i met with my agent and well he just told me that they were interested in me at the beginning i thought about it but like now i'm here i'm happy but at the end of the day i realized that here i think it's a better place they believe more in the you they believe in they believed in me they told me so yeah that's basically my path of how i, how I came here so ju just a couple of things i i picked up on listening to you there like you spoke and you speak very well you speak very you're very confident for a young lad as well so i just think the setbacks that you suffered do you feel like they've made you stronger like you said i think uh, your manager didn't believe in you and stuff like that so maybe you're kind of i don't know maybe your parents helped you with that in terms of how, how yeah. to deal with that and you know progress in the next year then definitely uh my first year of 11 aside i think after like 10 league games or 11 i told my parents I told my agent that he wanted to leave because at, at that time I was like, I don't know, 13 years old. And I thought, if I'm not going to play now, I'm not going to play when I'm older. I'm not going to make it. That was, that was my mindset at that moment. But my, my dad, my mom, we all sat down one day and we just talked that I just had to keep going. I'm not going to, they said they respect my choice, but they think it would be a bad choice at that time. And at the end, they convinced me not to stay, but like to keep believing in myself. And I think, the, ne the year after that was when I exploded. That was, thank them, to be honest, because I was in a bad moment, not depression or anything like that, but bad moment in football. I was not playing. I felt like I was better than most of them and I, I should be starting lineup, should be known. But so, yeah, so after that year, 
when I started playing, I realised the potential that I had and that I can go way further than I actually am. So, yeah. So do, you, so do you look at that now, obviously, you know, you talk to any footballers, they'll tell you that they have setbacks and they have this and that, but do you think that's going to set you up a, a little bit better for, for anything that may kind of hold you back in the future? The fact Definitely. that you, you have that, um, I suppose, that strength, mental strength now that if something kind of comes up like that or something holds you back that you feel like you can overcome that obstacle? Definitely, because, uh, for example, where I'm, where I'm at now, if I if I had a setback like two years ago and now I'm here doing good, for example, in two years I have another setback, my mindset is stronger and I know not to just give up straight away, to actually give it time and give it all of that. I think having a setback is important because it makes you realise that stuff can go wrong but at the end of the day, stuff will, will come your way. You just need to have patience. I think that's the most important thing in football. Patience. You just just patience. That's it. I think what a lot of people and uh, I know Darren Randolph actually commented on the on the post yesterday, uh, wishing you well. Um, and he's he's a very much one of these people who had a lot of setbacks in football. He always says, you know, don't ever get too high, don't ever get too low. Try and kind of find that med- that medium, I suppose, in between. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and just kind of on that because you know, COVID. That's just the last thing. How have you dealt with COVID due to the fact that yeah, I suppose it's worked well in your favour in some cases that yeah. you got the move and stuff like that. Obviously, you haven't been able to play international football, but I'm sure that will come soon. Yeah, COVID. Well, quarantine was nice. I, I can't enjoy quarantine, but uh, <laughs> COVID right now is not the best for us because. Uh, we played the league with normality like till December. And when we came back from Christmas, imagine I'm like 10 hours away from home. They told us that we're not going to play in two weeks. That two weeks came into one month. That one month became two months. And we were January, like December, sorry, till, I don't know, maybe a, a month ago without like, it was four months with no competition, no, no football, no training for two months. At the end, of the last two months, I was allowed to train with two years older. I trained with under under 19s and under 18s. But like I was four months without playing football. And so COVID did, is has affected really our league because right now we should be playing the playoffs to see who wins the league. But we're only starting the second half of the league. And especially it's my first year in Villarreal. So my first year, I would, like, I would love my ma to watch my games. My dad, my dad, my stepdad, all my friends come over, maybe see see a few games, but they can't. They, it's all played behind closed doors. They would be lucky if there's a like there's a match where you allowed people in. So yeah, I would I would love for my parents to come and see me play, but they can't too. So it's not that well. How do you find that? Because you're obviously away from home. I I imagine they're in. Did you say Cadiz? Is, is that where they're living? No, they're living in Esther Power, Marbella, basically, Marbella. Okay. Uh, so how do you find that then? Because you're obviously, you're only a young lad, like, and I know, you Def, look, you seem yeah. like you have a really good head on your shoulders and stuff, but how do you find that being away from them? And I'm sure you have friends that are back in Marbella that you would have been very close and friendly with and, they, you know, you don't get to see yeah. them. Are you by yourself now in, in uh, Villarreal? Uh, yeah, I'm all, well, I have my teammates, obviously, that live with me because... We, my team is players all over Spain, but it's actually it doesn't. It, maybe I might not look sad or anything, but it's actually it's actually kind of tough because, let's just say, I have immense support from my parents and my friends. My friends say, "Don't worry," because I become sad sometimes because I'm just lying down in my room doing nothing. Maybe one weekend while my friends are out meeting up, and my my parents are going out eating with my sister, and I'm just here on my own. And they can't even come to see me with COVID. So it's it's tough. I'm not going to lie. The first few months were actually really tough because I just I just wanted to go home. I missed the feeling of coming home, going home every day, meeting with my friends on the weekends. But I have a strong mindset. My parents helped me a lot. My friends helped me even more. I think everybody helps me a lot to stay focused because what I do, I do this for a reason. Sorry. Give me a second. Oh, never mind. I do, this, I do this for a reason. So... I just, I just want to thank them, my friends, my family, keep me strong here because it's tough. It's tough, I'm not going to lie. I'm only 16, supposed to be living life right now, but I'm actually like 10 hours away from home. I go home maybe Christmas, summer and a few weekends. So, yeah, it's tough, but, but I'm getting there. 
I think that's that's the side of football that people don't see, isn't it? And then you also have exactly. the fact that this is the sacrifice that footballers have to make to, you know, with the longer and look, it's it, nothing is guaranteed in life. So you, you've always exactly. got the sacrifice of where you want to get to. And then there's the, I suppose, do you ever see that, that image of the mountain and then there's the tip of the Definitely. iceberg down the bottom where no one sees all the graft it takes to get to where you want to be, you know? I totally agree. I think they really over, how to say it, just, they just think that the football life is easy. You, you go to the first team, you win millions. And I think it's actually maybe one of the, not the hardest sports, but it's the hardest to get to the first team, the sacrifice. Like I've had loads of people, for example, yesterday in my DM saying, um, congratulations, you've made it. Okay, I've had people, um, how to say it, negative people say, Oh, it's really easy and they don't see the sacrifice I have to make. I have to make massive sacrifice because I have to wake up at seven in the morning, go to school, come back, eat, train, study every day. Don't see me family, don't see nothing. So it's something that most people don't see, but it's actually a big sacrifice that you have to take that I think personally most like 50% or maybe even more people will not be able because I've had this year. So people be in my team year older stay three months and be like i can't do this anymore i miss my family people that have girlfriends be like i have to go home and they just they just leave football to go home because they can't take it so yeah it's actually a big sacrifice I, i'm actually glad that you said it because i think a lot of young footballers who are probably watching this and i'm sure there will be a lot that will watch this you, you know with keen interest because i i actually think it's refreshingly honest to hear someone of your age speaking like this I, you know you know you rarely hear it so i have to say huge credit to you we just want to finish on a more positive note um, and yeah. just your goal your goals for the future because you've just signed your your first professional contract which is brilliant so what are your kind of goals now over what have you set yourself if you don't want to give anything away that's totally no, fine as well no no it's, it's, it's okay uh for example, this season is finished uh, like for this season at the end i want to finish top goal scorer of the league right now i'm at the top uh, i have 11 goals i'm number one in the league with goals so I just want to keep... I've seen some of the goals. There's some pingers there, all right. Yeah, yes, I do. We do work on our finishing a lot, our passing. But yeah, my goals are to fi win the league, finish up goal scorer for this season, but maybe in the future, make the first team. I must, it doesn't have to be here. I just want to have a little taste of professional football and maybe try to make it to be the best. That's that's my aim and it should be everybody's aim, to be the best. That's that's brilliant. Listen, I'm going to finish it on that note, Kane. It's been an absolute pleasure kind of getting to know you and, you know, hearing your mindset on things. So, listen, thanks for taking the time out to have a chat. It's been brilliant. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it.